Hello, hi, uh, my name is Akira. Uh, thank you very much for joining us again, like for our uh, special Noodle class. Uh, we are broadcasting again from our headquarters in Kagawa, Japan. My name is Akira. I'm going to be a host uh, for this class. And this is uh, my colleague, Megumi. She's making high hydration noodle today on our ramen machine and the udon machine. So let's get started on our class. And let's start uh, showing some, some of the slides that I have for this lecture. So um, we're talking about high hydration noodles today. And for those of you like who don't know much about uh, noodle making, Hydration is how much liquid slash water is contained in noodle dough. And we define high hydration noodles as having over 40% hydration ratio. That means, for example, there's four kilograms of liquid slash water in 14 kilograms of dough. That's four kilograms of liquid and 10 kilograms of, 10 kilograms of solid ingredients. So that's high hydration noodles. And they are very good in terms of noodle texture and being able to make and offer great hydration noodles would be a great big plus to your current business. So let's learn how to make great high hydration noodles today. Uh, but before um, you get into the class, uh, let me uh, do a, just a bit of like brief introduction about, about us, like for those of you who don't know much about us. Um, we're 45 year old manufacturer of noodle making machines. Um, these noodle making machines are designed for uh, restaurants and small production. They make um, spurb in Japanese noodles, ramen, udon, soba, or other types of noodles like Chinese style noodles, you know, pasta at high quality. And we also run uh, noodle schools for about like 20 years. Um, we run noodle schools, training courses on ramen, udon, soba. And so we have a school here, like in Kagawa, our recorder. We have another school in Tokyo, and we have another school in Singapore. And so we provide these schools like training courses for um, people who want to start up, you know, noodle restaurants, noodle businesses. We have customers using our machines in 61 countries and more. And we have offices in uh, Japan, including Tokyo, Osaka, in Fukuoka. Um, we have an uh, office in Seoul, Korea. We have an office in Singapore. We have one in Netherlands, another in United States. So we have partners in different countries. So we are basically like all over the world. So we're basically a team of noodle making experts who help our customers succeed in the businesses you know, with a spark uh, homemade noodles by providing training uh, noodle recipes, um, like noodle uh, making uh, tools or techniques, like or whatever they need to start their own uh, noodle businesses. So that's that's about us, and let's get into the today's class. Um, <clears throat> so this is our, what we're talking about today. So what, what's what's high hydration noodles? What types of noodles are of high hydration? What are the keys in making them great? And Megumi is, demonstrate, is going to demonstrate how hydration noodles are made from scratch. And a few examples of high hydration noodles shown by our one of our instructors in the kitchen. And we're going to finish this off uh, with the Q&A session. So if you have some questions during the class, please uh, send them in the comments. So there are many high hydration noodles in ramen, udon, uh, soba pasta, Chinese noodles, and other regional noodles across the world. Noodles that are high in high hydration typically have the following characteristics. Uh, noodle texture, um, soft, chewy, bouncy, and the color tends to be translucent. Uh, noodle size tends to be thick. <clears throat> when talking about noodle rations, it's useful to check them in this chart. Um, the, this chart shows different types of noodles in terms of noodle texture, hardness, and hydration, and noodle sizes. So for the noodle texture uh, or hardness, what matters the protein and flour used to make these noodles and the hydration ratios. Basically, how much liquid is added to the flour in mixing. So the higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture, and then the lower the 
hydration ratio, the harder the noodle texture. So high hydration ratio noodles um, are soft. Uh, the higher the hydration ratio, the softer noodle texture. So when we have noodles that's soft, we should cut the noodles, cut the noodle sheet into larger sizes because we want to make them into smaller. If we make them into you know, small sizes, the noodles do not you know, bite. If it's the, the noodle dough is soft and the noodle size is small, then you know if you bite into them, like the noodles will give you a good bite. I think the opposite wouldn't be good either, uh, because noodles that are hard and thick are just you know difficult to chew and eat. To, to have a certain level of good noodle texture, the noodle size and hardness should be balanced. This is the reason why most of these circles you, you see in this uh, chart. You know, they represent different types of noodles. They are positioned where the, this relationship between hardness, which is uh, made of like protein and hard, uh, hydration, and the noodle sizes, is sort of like balanced. And of course, there are variations, but this is basically the rule, um, the pattern. Uh, today, uh, so we are talking about noodles that are in high in hydration, so they should be positioned in the right side of this chart, uh, rather like at the bottom right of this chart. Okay, so <clears throat> there are many types of high hydration noodles. Um, for example, uh, udon noodles to use wheat flour with relatively low protein content, it's like seven to nine percent. Typically, have a hydration ratio of around fifty percent. There can be some other um, types of udon noodles with a lower hydration which we can make on our uh, ramen noodle machine. But because of the lower hydration, which makes the noodle texture harder, we should uh, make the noodle size smaller to balance the noodle texture. Because if we have like harder noodle texture, I mean, if we have like harder dough, if the noodle size is as big as, you know, for um, high hydration noodle, high hydration dough, then the noodle uh, tissue should be like too, maybe too hard. So we want to make it, make the noodle size a bit smaller. Uh, soba noodles with uh, main, so the main ingredients would be like buckwheat flour, also high in hydration, about like 45%, 50%. And there can be uh, soba noodles with a lower hydration, which we can make on a ramen noodle machine again. But like about half of the solid ingredients need to be wheat, flour, or other ingredients with the gluten. Because black wheat is gluten-free, it does not form into noodles by itself. There needs to be other binding agent. So other types of high hydration noodles, such as certain types of Chinese noodles, for example, there's bian bian men noodles that are around 50% hydration. You can, you can look this up in the uh, uh, internet later. This type of noodles are like very wide, flat, and chewy. You can also produce pasta such as fettuccine, etc., with a lot of liquid. There are famous regional ramen noodles in Japan that are high water content. The famous one, uh, maybe Sun Ramen, and which is a neighbor city in Tochigi Prefecture. The hydration is about like 55-50%. Second most famous one, maybe like Takata ramen with a over 40% hydration ratio. Shiroka ramen is about like 42, 47 in hydration from Fukushima prefecture. Yonezo ramen is about around like 42, 48% in water content and famous in Yamagata prefecture. What they have in common are wavy noodles. They're all curled to certain degrees. To check, um, if, if you can check this table, like that categorizes these noodles by hydration ratio, noodle size, and how they're curled. Um, we're not sure about, like, why they're curled, but like probably curled noodles hold more soup. And all these ramen dishes have like soup that's like light in taste. So uh, the curled noodles like um, carry more soup so that, you know, that the, the texture and then the noodle uh, soup taste is sort of like balanced. Um, and then maybe like curl noodles, like give more like unique random noodle texture. And because of soft noodle texture from a lot of liquid content, 
they're easy to curl without breaking and flexible uh, when they are in fresh noodles. Especially Kitakata ramen, Shiraka ramen, and some ramen are thick and curled by hand. These noodles look like, and some of them are actually made by hand. Because most of the high hydration noodles, those are soft. Some chefs make them by hand still. Now like um, those Chinese noodles. We can make these types of noodles on our udon machine and soba machine that are designed to produce high hydration noodles and mimic hand making techniques. We'll demonstrate how these types of noodles can be made on a ramen machine later. And so in these uh, types of like regional high hydration ramen noodles are like sort of like concentrated in this region of Japan. So in this chart, like udon machine, a soba machine are good at producing noodles that are over 45% in hydration. But ramen machines are good at making noodles that are less in hydration. So let's talk about um, the keys in making uh, great high hydration noodles. So, you know, we think there are three keys in uh, making great high hydration noodles. And then one of them is the ingredients, in the flour, water, another is gluten development. And the last one is the noodle size plus shape. So the protein, the ingredients, the wheat flour, you know, we talked about wheat flour before and you know, protein of the wheat flour is that uh, it determines the hardness of the noodle texture. And when talking about high hydration noodles, because the water content is high, which makes the noodle texture soft. Um, when making, uh, especially like the thin noodles, um, we want to make the thin noodles, you know, according to that chart, the pattern, um, we want to make the thin noodles relatively um, firm, harder. So for that size, size of noodles that's high hydration, um, we want to use flour with the uh, high protein, um, probably around like 11, 12 percent. And the when we make like thick noodles that's a bigger size, um, we want to make we want to use the per, uh, flour with the protein content like that's lower, probably like around eight percent, seven percent. And ash ash is like basically indicates how much minerals the flour contains and the higher the ash, the darker the color uh, of the noodles, and the stronger the wheat flavor. And um, so that, that's basically it. And then um, when for high hydration noodles, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty much up to you. So if you want to, well, bring some like darker color to it, then, you know, you should use the flour with the higher ash content. Viscosity is um, more important and Huh? Okay. Um, I think I think we had some uh, bit of problem with uh, the uh, internet or something. So ingredients, right? Ingredients is very important, like when making you know good high hydration noodles. And for ingredients, of course, like wheat flour, right? Wheat flour. You know, we already talked about the protein. Um, so protein, the hardness of the noodle texture is determined by hydration and the protein of flour. So the higher the protein, uh, the harder, right? So we're making uh, smaller size noodles, thinner size noodles. Um, we want to, according to the chart, right? The pattern in the chart, we want to make the, we want to make it, you know, harder, right? Harder, harder, thinner. Then, so we want to use the flour with higher protein like around 11 to 12 percent. Um, when making like thicker noodles, um, we want to make it softer. So we want to use the flour with the pr lower protein content, like seven, eight percent. And so for some of the, some of the t um, unique take noodle texture, um, you know, we, we can blend. We can blend the different flours with different um, uh, protein content. And ash, ash is like basically indicates like how much minerals is contained in the flour. Um, the d higher the ash, the darker the color, the stronger the wheat flavor. Um, so it's really up to you. Like you know, well, I think I think tendency is that like um, 
like nowadays, like we, you know, uh, a lot of Brahmin shelves like want to add a um, bit of like flower with the high ash to, well, make uh, the color like darker, um, which um, some people perceive as like healthier. So that's that's but that's real up to you. And viscosity is um, it determines like how elastic the noodle becomes, like how flexible. And uh, basically, the higher the viscosity value, the, the better the noodle texture. Um, but it's but this value is not shown in the pro, uh, product label, like uh, protein or ash. Um, so we want if you have like some sample flour you want to test for this value, um, you can send those uh, sample flowers to us, and we can test it for you, like on our the machine that we have for to measure this value. Another ingredient. That water, water is very important because you know the high hydration noodles means like basically that more water, uh, more water noodle, like noodles have that has more water, um, and the kind of water we want to use is soft water. Um, so when we're cooking noodles, right, um, there's some like ingredients that are, that need to be released to um, the cooking water, boiling water, and in exchange the noodles absorb the cooking water. So this exchange process um, makes well cooks the noodle, and but like if you cook the noodles like in hot water, then like that has contained like you know a lot of uh, minerals like magnesium, like calcium. So th th these magnesium and calcium like actually um, block the uh, all these um, ingredients from release um, being released to the cooking water. So basically, there's less room for these um, uh, ingredients to be released to in the hot water. So it takes time. It takes time to cook the noodles. So if you cook the noodles like long for a longer time, then uh, you know the surface, the, the noodles like melt, uh, melts, which is a bad for um, the noodle texture. And um, you know we we're losing like some of the noodles into uh, the cooking water because the, the noodles melts into the cooking water. So you know we are getting less noodles, and we are getting like uh, poorer um, the noodle texture from um, Hard water cooking, so um, we want to use soft water. And then you know, think about like, you know, we, we want to we, we would need to like spend more time, money on like cooking. Um, you know, think about gas, like electricity to cook these noodles for a longer time. And um, you know, this is an everyday thing, right? So like, you know, think about doing that for like month, like years. You know, think about like how much money you'd save like by going soft water. So if you have to work with the hard water, then you should use uh, water softener. So that's water and, okay. Um, so let's start talking about gluten development. Gluten development is also important for um, high hydration noodles. So um, this slide like basically um, shows, um, you know, how we can build um, the good, great gluten structure inside dough. And the most important process in this, in this slide is that way, I mean, the measuring of the ingredient the right ratios. Uh, we, we measure everything by weight because it's uh, for like better precision, like it's more accurate, you know, which gives us the, the quality, like better quality. Um, so we measure everything by weight, you know, grams or even pound. Um, the, at the right ratios, like so, no matter like we are, you know, how much we are making a batch, batch size. So whether we are making like four kilogram batch, whether we are making like ten kilogram batch, or if you can measure um, all the ingredients at the right ratio, like percentages, you know, we we are we can make the same, the quality, same types of noodles, same noodles, and so that's mm -hmm. the most important process. So we are trying to build like kind of web like network of uh, gluten, uh, like the one shown in the image. So the most, the first step is a mixing process. Uh, so mixing, the purpose of mixing is basically a good hydration of dough. And um, so we want to, so that like we want to like, you know, gradually like um, come the, um, Join these all these like uh, each well grain um, come together to like form like crumbles of dough, and as it's mixed with the liquid, and at the 
So this ag agitation graduation happens at the speed of like 60 rotations per minute, which um, a mixer uh, does. So um, hydration, uh, good hydration is what's happening like in the mixing process. And the second process is resting. So what resting does is like four functions. So again, like hydration and mixing from the mixing process. So it takes time to hydrate each flat particle. Like so, um, the resting further, uh, you know, uh, helps the uh, hydration of the dough in the mixing from the mixing, and it does like gassing. Like there are air pockets containing the noodle dough, and then these air pockets like may burst like uh, later in the noodle making um, process. So that that would uh, like undermine like damage the like gluten structure. So we want to like remove them like you know, at this stage. And we want to activate the enzyme. There are like two enzymes like in uh, dough like starch regulating enzyme, a proteolytic enzyme that decomposes protein and starch, uh, which turn into like amino acids and others that um, make the the taste of the noodles uh, better, the flavors of the noodle better. And also, like resting helps like relax the internal stress that's like, accumulated inside dough. So in the mixing process, like you know, that the dough got got some like uh, stress in, inside. So we want to release the stress. We want to uh, release the stress before we, uh, the dough goes into the next step. A bit about more about uh, resting process. So this is a optimal resting line. It corresponds to the time and temperature. And basically, the higher the temperature, the shorter the resting time. It's probably easier for you to understand this by like picturing a banana, right? Turning darker faster in the room during the hot summer day than the cold winter day. So that resting, um, you know, it just uh, the hotter, the shorter the resting time. Um, resting process matters more for though that's higher in hydration. So when we um, make authentic udon noodles, which is uh, usually around 50% hydration ratio, we apply a two-step resting. First resting is after mixing. It's done at 28 degrees Celsius for two hours. Second resting is after um, pressing uh, process. Dough is rested at 18 degrees Celsius for overnight for 24 hours. To further develop gluten structure, uh, we apply this process called the pressuring. So we further develop the uh, gluten structure by applying pressure or force onto dough. Um, when doing this on a noodle machine, for example, it can be either done by a combining process or pressing in a press machine on a udon, udon noodle machine. So applying equal and appropriate amount of pressure into the entire areas of dough is a key. So after pressuring, because the dough now has like much internal stress, it should again be rested before moving into the next process. All right. So um, after this, the dough is like complete with a like thorough, um, thoroughly developed like um, gluten structure. So all we have to do is just thin it. But like we need to gradually thin it, um, otherwise like you know it damages the uh, gluten structure. And you're gonna cut it and portion it. And for some types of ramen noodles, we're going to rest them uh, in the fridge for a few days. And a cooking, boiling, and especially uh, for like high hydration noodles, that, that's, that's big in size, like that's thick. Um, because there's going to be like starch after cooking, um, the surface of noodles, so we want to wash them off. Okay. Um, so the noodle size is very important to like when we are making like good uh, high hydration noodles. Um, so this is uh, this slide just kind of shows illustrates like different noodle sizes for um, kind of cutter we use for like uh, we call like slitter cutters, different sizes and shapes. Um, so number 20 means like so num like it's uh, there's one noodle strand is like 1.5 millimeter in breadth and uh, so this is a kind of cutter we use. Each group is 1.5 millimeter in width. And so on the ramen machine, uh, for example, like that, this is a cross section, like our set of rollers that that's the sheeting, the uh, sheet of dough. 
at uh, 1.0 millimeter, and that's going to the uh, slitter cutter, uh, which is a uh, number 10 cutter. This is a uh, 3.0 millimeter width. So the the thickness is determined by the um, roll gap, and then uh, width is determined by the cutter uh, groove size. Um, so in this example, like we're making like flat noodles, um, which is typically um, the shape of the uh, high hydration noodles. And this is uh, in case like you know cutting uh, noodles on the uh, udon noodle machine. So this is again like cross section of like um, the uh, the set of rollers, the, the rolling the uh, sheeting the dough sheet at 1.0 millimeter, and then the dough is a it, instead of like slitter cutter, it's, it cuts the dough like by um, the knife blade that's like going up and down. Uh, on the, onto um, the dough sheet that's like being moved by a conveyor. And so the speed of conveyor basically like, um, controls the, uh, the width of dough um, that's, that's cut by the blade knife um, that's you know, going up and down into the, uh, the dough sheet. Um, again, like it's the same shape, but like the cut surface is actually sharper um, on the dough uh, that's cut by a uh, wooden machine, usually it cuts with uh, like a knife blade instead of like a you know, cutter that has like a rougher surface. And so that kind of changed the like dough t uh, noodle texture as well. So getting the ideal noodle texture, um, so this just shows like how noodles get cooked and soggy. It's getting like cut surface. Um, you know, just talking about so that the water, boiling water, like actually penetrates and um, enters the dough noodles from the cut surface. You know, and so then the, the water, like, sort of like slowly, like, penetrates into the noodles, like, towards the core. And so when there's a, a certain portion of the core left, like, row, row uh, part remaining uh, in the noodles, so we, we call this. Uh, kind of condition like gelatinization, gelatinized condition. Um, so the starch of noodles like take up liquid and swell when he heat it and it becomes clear gel-like texture. So kind of like a wine show in a picture. So that, that's, a, that's a cooked um, condition, but like over time that the water penetrates towards the core and then uh, when there's like no um, roll part like left, then the, the noodle is soggy. So how much noodles are cooked that also like determines the, the like kind of noodle texture as well like when you know your customers like bite into the noodles so by changing the cooking time and estimating how long the noodles would have to like travel um before or consumed by the um the customers and then you know you have to like take into account like noodle size ingredients uh you know we talked about the the flour protein the, the water hydration. So you need to like control the noodle texture your customers may experience. So try to get the ideal noodle texture. We need to think about, you know, ingredients, the flour water, and then gluten development, and then noodle size and shape. Okay, so that's, that's basically like what I had for this lecture. Um, and um, before, you go to the kitchen, like uh, Megumi is going to make some noodles from scratch. And okay, so we have the ingredients over here. Um, so this is um, ingredients for uh, udon noodles. So as we as we talk about like udon noodles, um, the protein content of flour we use for udon noodles like very, very uh, low, lower um, protein content like eight percent, around like eight to nine, and then we have water, uh, soap water, and uh, we have salt, um, relatively little like um, big amount of salt. Um, that's going to be dilute, uh, dissolved in the water before I add the flour. 
and we have um, vinegar as well. So these are the liquid, these are the solid, this is the solid ingredients. And what's different this time is that like we are making uh, udon noodles on a ramen machine. Udon noodles on the ramen machine. And uh, so this is um, this, this ramen machine is called like Richmond One, and it has a it has a mixer that that you can mix up to like um, 10 kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. And the minimum batch is four kilograms, so we are doing like four kilograms batch. But again, you know, we talked about in the um, noodle process that whether, no matter like what the batch size, the the ratio, the the mixing ratio, the like recipe is the same. So like, if you're doing ten, and if it's like the hydration ratio is like forty percent, um, then you know it's the amount of liquid is. 40% to the weight of the solid ingredient. So, and so she did like she added the liquid, liquid which contains the uh, salt and vinegar onto the lid, which has a small holes. And uh, through these small holes, like the, the water, like liquid is like dripped through to, the, to be added to the flour. So we add the liquid like little by little. And um, yeah, the mixing time, like total mixing time is five minutes, but like, you know, it's, um, yeah, we, we can just stand here, just keep watching it. So she, she prepared actually um, the dough beforehand. And uh, so she's uh, moving on to the next process. That's a uh, um, rough sh sheeting. So that's a kind of resting process that she did actually on this dough. So she put the dough in the plastic bag and seal it to keep it from drying. And then um, put it in a, a what we call like, it's a, it's, a, it's a cabinet that controls the, uh, the temperature inside. And uh, she put that dough into the cabinet and uh, 28 degrees Celsius. So to make udon dough, udon noodles, like on this kind of machine, um, which is uh, designed to do a variety of um, ramen noodles, which there are like, are like less than 45% in hydration. Um, you know, so that like you'd have to make the hydration of the udon noodles lower than, uh, well, let's say like, authentic udon noodles, um, which are like around 50% like in hydration. And so the amount of, the amount of like salt, the amount of um, vinegar we're adding to this dough are different. And uh, hydration ratio we could probably do is that like we, we could probably do like maybe like 40% or uh, udon that we can do on this kind of machine. And for, if, if you want to do like udon noodles, like that's, you know, kind of authentic. Authentic means like you know, higher in hydration. So like the noodle texture is like softer, maybe like bouncier. Uh, and then the noodle size thicker, um, you'd have to use a, a udon machine to make them. But, um, but udon noodles like that are made on this machine are, are pretty good too. Like as long as you um, cut it into kind of smaller size, 
small size, like so, you, like you know, the noodles shouldn't be too too thick because again, like hydration ratio that you know this machine is good at doing is less than 45 percent, and case like 40 percent, like 38 percent, like don't know. That's that's uh, relatively hard for um, udon noodles. So you 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 can't you shouldn't go well too thick noodle size. Otherwise, again, like remember the remember the relationship uh, we we uh, showed like in the chart. Um, so that's thicker. I mean, the harder the noodle tissue, like thinner, we should, we want to go to to have like a good um, kind of balanced noodle texture. So, so we did the uh, rough forming, which makes the rough sheet of dough. And next step, because the dough is like still like pretty fragile, so like we want to make it firm, like we want to make it stronger by separating it to two and combine them into one through uh, the rollers. Make it firm, and um, so typically this um, type of dough, like this, like we don't noodles, um, the flour used is uh, actually has a lower ash content, so that. You see that, like the color, right? The color of the dough is like pretty white. It's very white, and that's that's just because that the that the image we have, like the image like Japanese have for uh, udon noodles, is like has like kind of white color. You know, they, it's not like kind of brown rice or like kind of dark. Um, sourdough bread or something, um, but it's, it's more like um, it's, it's white. So um, especially like um, people from like older generations would be, be, um, be weird to see like in udon noodles that are kind of yellow, like darker color. So that's why um, the flowers that are available in Japan for udon noodles have very low uh, ash content. So we did that, the combining process, right? First one. And typically we do like this combining process like twice um, to make it firm. <clears throat> and again, like, you know, we, we talk about like gluten development, right? You know, the gluten development is like the gluten structure is like actually growing um, inside dough. While well, we do this uh, process, the combining first one, second one, and at this, in this uh, doing the second combined process, um, we we just assume that like gluten structure has been thoroughly developed. And so after this, uh, all we have to do is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness before we cut it into the noodles. And, you know, we had to dust it. We had to dust, especially these high hydration noodles, you know, that's very wet, um, sticky. So we won't dust it from a second combining process. Otherwise, they, 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 the dough stick together. So what we are doing is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness. But again, like we, we need to make sure that we thin it gradually. 
uh, without um, damage the gluten structure inside dough. So we want to thin it um, bit by bit. So that was um, actually three millimeter roll gap that it's gone through, and but it's now the actual thickness is at 3.8 millimeter. So there's a difference of um, 0 0.8. So the actual thickness is always bigger than the roll gap we set because the dough um, expands after it's gone through the wall gap. So there's an 0.8 millimeter difference. So the actual thickness is 0.8 bigger than the wall gap. So it just expands, right, by 0.8. And so this is important because, you know, we need to calculate um, what the wall gap into set to get the final thickness in the actual thickness dough. And we're using this cutter, number 10, which is a three millimeter in width, right? Three millimeter in width. So the width is determined by the groove in the uh, slitter cutter, groove size in the slitter cutter and the thickness is determined by the roller gap. We're gonna cut it, right? We're gonna cut it. And we're cutting the noodle sheet of dough into uh, the noodle strands. And the length of the noodles are determined, uh, determined by, I mean, the length of the noodle that determines the, the noodle serving size. And you can you can easily adjust it adjust the length of noodles by the the volume volume you can make it shorter for um, smaller serving size or you can make it more, longer for bigger serving size. So this is very um, easy to make. Udon noodles or like any any types of uh, noodles, and then like it's very easy to like control the, uh, the serving size, recipes or, like ingredients, and then it's very you can you can make like a variety of noodles like with a consistency and quality. So, um, so that was. Udon noodles she made on the uh, ramen machine, right? Next, she's going to make um, high hydration ramen noodles, ramen noodles on the udon machine. So the ingredients, the flour, you know, this is the protein is higher than the uh, udon, udon flour. Protein is like 11 percent, right? And um, so we, we got water. Um, these are the liquid ingredients, like water, um, can salt, 
right? But like it's, it's high in hydration. So again, like we put the flour to the mixer. Let's set the timer and start the mixer, right? And usually mix it just with the solid ingredients for one minute. We call it uh, air, air rotation. And um, so we need to like dissolve like all these salt and calcium to the water slowly to make sure that before we add it to the flour. So again, um, I think we are adding the liquid. We're going to wait. <clears throat> and again, uh, the mixing time is five minutes in total, right? Remember, like, sure, um, the higher the hydration, the shorter the mixing time. But, you know, it's, uh, we, we can just wait for five minutes, is just watching the uh, the mixer, right? It's, uh, it's boring, so we gonna go to the next process, which is the uh, pressuring the uh, pressure machine. So she prepared the dough, right? Um, in a again, like in a resting cabinet, and then so we're gonna we're gonna uh, put it in the press machine to the press the dough. We apply the force, right, to make it firm to develop like building structure, right? We talked about it, right? Pressuring. And so this press machine um, basically mimics the like hand making techniques of like, you know, in old days, like people would uh, like put step in a dough to make the dough firm. And this press machine so like mimics that techniques. And um, So it applies a, a lot of pressure into onto the dough, but like kind of equal amount of pressure like in the entire area of the dough. And uh, so it's like to make it firm, like to develop gluten structure inside. So first like you press it, right? And then make it firm and then like we need to fold it like that to make sure like Entire areas of dough is gets a uh, equal amount of pressure. So that was second. Um, time of pressing. And for like production, like kind of authentic um, udon noodles. So we, we always do this um, pressuring process. And actually like in, in Kagawa, like where, you know, like it's very, the, the Sanuki udon the, is, is very famous. And they're like approximately like 700 to like 800 like Sanuki Udon specialty shops. And actually some of the shops actually do still do this by by hand, by like by, by feet. Um, so they, yeah, they, they do it like in the old, old way. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's actually labor, labor intensive. It takes a lot of takes up a lot of energy, even though like you know just stepping on it, but yeah. So there are a lot of like people. Um, there are a lot of like udon shops um, going into the um, kind of machine. So we did that for three times, and we're gonna 
we're gonna sheet it, we're gonna thin it, but like, you know, this is a, this dough is like too big for um, portion for uh, sheeting. So we want to uh, divide it up to small pieces for um, kind of more uh, efficient operation of sheeting. So that the color is a bit like yellow, like compared to the udon noodles that we did, right? The dough. That's that's because of the kanji that's added to the dough. This makes the the dough, uh, the flour, a bit yellow. And then you see the layers of uh, dough, right? So that's the pressing, and then that um, gives the like really good uh, noodle texture. And uh, so that's that's very different, like from um, Kind of, this is sort of like equivalent, not equivalent, but like, you know, kind of uh, what the combining process does in on the ramen machine. But instead, like you know, we do like kind of this pressing um, process on the udon noodle machine. And because this is, this is like really, I mean, wetter, wetter dough than uh, the dough we did like on the ramen machine. So we need should apply the a uh, lot of dusting powder um, to make sure that it's not gonna stick together. So we apply a lot of dusting powder, and then we said, and um, we want to, um, you know, we need to like kind of flatten it um, for that dough to be like kind of. Insert it through the uh, the bar, the safety bar that this machine has. Um, but you know, it takes a uh, takes a lot of strength actually to um, flatten them. So you want to use the, uh, the press machine to flatten them. Just make them flat enough to um, be inserted under underneath the like safety bar of the. Uh, the bollards. Yeah, I think they are flat. It's flat enough. We're gonna sheet it, right? And then we're gonna start from the first gear. So this gear, uh, as we go up, right, um, it's gonna narrow the roller gap between the roller two rollers. And so, you know, again, like we're gradually thin the dough. To work to keep the so like building structure intact. So just gradually thin it. And she's actually inserting the dough at different directions. So that dough is like being rolled, being um, being thinned uh, different different directions. This uh, actually strengthens the the dough. And it uh, affects it like noodle tissue as well. In the ramen machine, you can paint it only like at one direction, so that the noodle dough um, that's uh, made on the ramen machine is uh, a bit weak um, from the pressure, like from the side. If it pulls like to the side. Um, it may rip uh, with a bit of like force. So, but like this um, dough being rolled in like in this machine, like being rolled, like being sheeted like in different directions, it's a uh, also kind of translates into um, texture. And um, yeah, it's being it's getting like really thin. And then you may be able to like see 
may be able to see the numbers like on display. That's actually measuring the thickness of this dough. So that's 5.4 millimeter, but like it's doubled. So she doubled the, uh, the two, two um, layer, uh, layers of the dough sheet. So 5.4 millimeters, so like one sheet of dough is uh, probably like about like 2.7 millimeter in thickness. Okay, so she is going to cut it. So this machine uses this different cutting system. You know, I, I kind of talked about it and uses this like knife cutter that's like moving up and down. Moving up and down onto the door sheet that's being moved on the uh, conveyor belt. And so the speed of conveyor belt actually determines the width of the dough. There's a timing that this blade is cutting into the dough sheet you know, is determined by the, the speed of conveyor belt that's uh, carrying this dough sheet. So this machine is like, it's really um, kind of like mimics the uh, hand making techniques of like hand making like noodle, uh, noodle making techniques. And so that's size down like, so the noodles are like nicely like lined up and so it's really, really thick, thick um, for, uh, like ramen noodles, but like they are, these noodles like high in hydration ratios, like you know that makes these noodles like soft, like bouncy, chewy. Um, so it's a, uh, it's 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 very different, uh, like, like noodle tissue that you uh, from like a typical like ramen noodles that are made on like a ramen machine. So they're great for um, types of ramen, like we talked about, like regional ramen noodles, like, you know, sun ramen and stuff like that too. And also like um, dipping noodles. And of course you can use uh, for um, like some other types of Chinese noodles. They're very good. And like, of course, like certain types of pasta noodles are like, that are high in hydration. So this is our kitchen where, uh, you know, we each teach like up to like eight people at a time. Um, we believe in like one-on-one -on -one session so that, you know, we can uh, provide like more like full, uh, complete uh, support for uh, each individual, like for this, this class course. And um, so we have like, for example, like we have like eight, um, not 10 uh, induction cookers, like big ones and so each induction cooker would be like cooking like different ingredients to make stock, right? Uh, how each ingredient tastes in stock, right? And we're gonna be making different types of like curry sauce, right? So, you know, we make everything from scratch, actually. So um, we teach basics, we teach like different applications. Um, so each student uh, has his whole own idea of like, you know, what kind of ramen, what kind of noodle they want to make. And so we uh, just, you know, help um, achieve their uh, ideal recipes from scratch, original recipes from, from scratch. And um, so that's what we do. And we provide a place, provide like expertise to make it, um, make it happen. And of course, like students can like share uh, their other you know, recipes like with other people uh, for attending also. And so, you know, not just on your own like recipe, but like, you know, also they can share, we can share uh, other people's recipes as well. Okay, um, so we have um, instructors for school. Um, introduce Mr. Akeda. Uh, so yes, he did the, um, the previous class on uh, the VBS.
fast food and then like she did like he did like really excellent job like showing us how to make uh show me like other types of like you know wheat based foods and then because he has background in chinese cuisine and uh so she's a uh, great teacher and uh we're very lucky to have him for the school and so thank you Mr. Ikeda. thank you very much okay and uh this is son um so she's uh he did like one of the classes actually my class before and because uh, he speaks he speaks chinese and uh so he's with us like with uh, uh, for the school like for um, uh, several months, but like you know, he's a great uh, instructor as well. So for those of you like who are um, comfortable like talking in Chinese, uh, you know he, he'd be happy to like answer some of the questions we have. So um, please feel free to um, ask me any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sun. All right, so we have uh, Mr. Takeuchi. Uh, he's from um, Vancouver, Canada. He's the native speaker of English, and uh, he's uh, he has a background in Japanese cuisine, and um, yeah, you can call him Thomas. Like so, we we are lucky to have him to teach us um, a few examples of uh, uh, high hydration noodle dishes today, and um, so I'll pass it to uh, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Ram Yamato Ramen School. And today I'll be talking about high hydration noodles. So let's just go over to the board. Mentioned already, but I'm just going to briefly talk about it. Uh, high hydration noodles, you call it high hydration noodles when you have more than 40% liquid against the flour. So there's more liquid mixed into the dough compared to other type of ramen noodles or any kind of noodle. And the characteristics. High hydration noodles are soft yet chewy uh, because there's a lot of liquid mixed into the dough. It's usually softer, but because of the gluten, it's going to still be uh, chewy at the same time. And also, the noodle tends to be translucent. Sometimes we get the question, uh, how to make your noodles uh, translucent? So one of the point is to bring up the hydration level by having more liquid mixing uh, mixed into the dough, the noodle becomes translucent. So that's one of the points. And lastly, high hydration noodles get soggy slower uh, because there's already a lot of liquid mixed into the dough. There's less space there's not, uh, for the noodle to soak up more water again. So it gets soggy slower. So that's one of, a, one of the good characteristics of high hydration noodles. And high hydration noodles are suitable for thick noodles because it's soft and chewy. And they're great for hand-pressed wavy noodles. I'm going to be showing you this uh, later on. And also udon tends to be high hydration. And also tsukemen and mazemen as well. So in general, um, when you want thick, so, uh, thick and chewy uh, noodles, just go for the high hydration noodles. OK? So now that the high hydration noodles are explained, let's just start from the first one, uh, kamaage udon. So four different types, four different ways to serve your udon. Okay. So the first type is kamaage udon. So this is hot dip. Pick up the udon from the hot water and dip into the sauce. So that's kamaage udon. So that's the first one. And the second one is kake udon. And kake udon is hot udon in soup. Udon you as so this is the most common type of udon. And the third one on the cold side is bukake udon. So this is cold udon with sauce. So the udon is served cold and you have sauce on side and you just pour the sauce all, uh, over the udon. So that's bukake udon. And the fourth one is zaru udon. This is cold dipping udon. So the noodle is chilled and you also have the dipping sauce on side and you just pick up that cold udon and dip into the sauce. So these are the four main types of uh, udon. And today I will be showing you how to uh, finish off this kamaage udon. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so here's the udon. We've been boiling for six minutes. Okay. 
So the noodle is ready. And we're going to pick up the udon directly from the boiling water. Into the bowl. And what you want to do is, is you want to pick up that boiling water and just pour it in, into the bowl and just serve it with the udon. It, this keeps the udon hot. I'm just going to top it with mitsubari on top. And here's the dipping sauce. It's fish stock with soy sauce. And make sure to heat this up as well. So hot udon and hot dipping sauce and some condiments as well. So this is one of the traditional way of serving udon and it's called kamaage udon. And when you eat this kamagi udon, you just pick up the udon from the hot water and just dip into sauce and you eat it. Good. So yeah, this is great for winter during the cold season. Um, the noodles are hot, the dipping sauce is hot as well. It makes your body hot as well, warm, warm up your body as well. Okay. Okay, so next, I want to talk about ramen, and we're going to talk about something different today, okay? Okay, so usually ramen stock is made with pork bone, chicken, vegetables, and dry seafood. That's the, one of the most common type of ingredients used for ramen stock. But today, I'll be showing you something different uh, we'll be making the stock, we made the stock with fresh seafood, okay? So, um, many of our customers um, using our machine, they own a Japanese restaurant or sushi restaurant, and one of the problems with sushi restaurant is that leftover fish bone. Uh, they have a whole bunch of leftover fish bone, and they end up throwing away because they fillet the, sa uh, fillet the salmon or red snapper, and use it for sushi and sashimi, and they're gonna end up with that fish bone, and they usually end up throwing it away and it becomes a waste. But today, I'll be showing you a um, way to make ramen stock out of the fish bone. And so you're, you're gonna be using every part of the fish, so it's great for um, less food waste, okay? And some common type of fish used for this fresh seafood ramen is red snapper and salmon and cod. And today, I'll be using the red snapper. And let me just briefly talk about the stock making method. And first, you just fillet the fish and you're gonna end up with a uh, fish bone. And you want to roast the bone just like this. So, just like you just you want to roast that fish bone just so that you have slight brown parts. So, and then after you roast the bone, you want to simmer the bone for three to four hours, just like this. Start simmering this stock maybe three to four hours ago. And lastly, you just want to strain the stock and you'll have a uh, ramen stock made out of fish, uh, fresh seafood. Okay, and today we'll be making shio ramen and skimen out of this uh, fresh seafood broth. So, <clears throat> so the first I want to talk about the noodles. So obviously today's topic is high hydration noodles, so we'll be using high hydration noodles, ramen noodles, for this uh, fresh seafood ramen. And like I said, I want to show you it until you have that desired uh, waviness. Maybe two or three times should be enough.
Great, sorry about that. One more time. Okay, okay so I'll be showing you how to hand press your noodles um, to make them wavy. Okay, so now that the noodles are ready, let's uh, prepare the stock. So I'm going to strain the stock. So here's that strained stock. And let's heat this up. Okay, so while that stock is heating up, let's start boiling the noodles. Okay. Uh, these noodles should be a minute and a half. And make sure that boiling machine is rapidly boiling. It allows the noodle to be moving around freely for that consistent boil. Once you put the noodles in, first five or ten seconds, you want to mix it up. Okay. So while the noodles are boiling, let's get the flavoring sauce and the oil ready. So here's the salt base. Motodare, flavoring sauce for this ramen. Just pour one full scoop of this salt motodare. And this is chicken, uh, chicken, sorry, chicken oil based flavoring, flavored oil. And a scoop of this oil. And we still have a little bit more time. And let me explain the toppings. Here's a sous vide red snapper. And I'm going to torch the skin for a nice aroma. Okay. Just like this. And the noodle should be ready in 20 seconds. So I'm going to take that boiling stock and pour into the ramen bowl. And the noodles ready. So make sure to strain out all the boiling water because this is going to dilute the soup. And pour the noodle into the soup. And you want to line up the noodles. And between the red snapper, I'm going to put sadachi citrus. And I'm going to top this in the middle. And also thinly sliced leek, just above it. And for the nice red mini tomato. And also this is red snapper skin deep fried. It's nice and crunchy. It's going to give a nice texture and also a nice flavor to the ramen. Okay. And I'm going to top it with mitsuga leaf on top. And also pink pepper. And just lastly, pink pepper to finish it off. Okay, so this is how to finish off your um, snapper, red snapper shield ramen.
Okay, next, uh, let's move on to the skin man. Uh, so we're going to make shield skin man with a rest snapper sock. Okay, and we'll be using the flat noodles, flat high hydration noodles, and these are perfect for skin man. And the boiling time should be four minutes. And because we're serving this um, noodles cold, we're boiling it for four minutes. If I'm serving this hot, I'm probably going to boil this for two minutes and a half. So remember, if you're serving your noodles cold, make sure to boil the noodles 1.5 or two times longer than regular boiling time. Rip. So four minutes. Once again, mix the noodles once you put it in and start the timer. Okay, let's prepare the dipping sauce. So let's go over to the stock one more time. We'll be using this 200 milliliter ladle. And for skin man, for actually for ramen, you usually pour the flavoring sauce and the oil into the bowl and pour the hot soup into it. But for skin man, you want to Mix the flavoring sauce and oil directly in the saucepan because you want to serve it extra hot compared to ramen. Compared to ramen, uh, skim has less sauce, so it cools down faster. So you want to mix everything together, heat it up together to serve it extra hot. Okay, so let's heat this up. Okay, so the, while the dipping sauce is heating up, let's talk about the toppings. So once again, we have that sous vide red snapper, and I'm going to uh, torch the skin. And we have sudachi citrus and soft boiled egg, memma, bamboo shoots, radish sprouts, and this is seaweed, uh, mixed seaweed, and thinly sliced leaf, mituba leaf, and grilled tomato. And once again, Going to slide the sudachi citrus in between the red snapper, just like this. Okay. And the noodles should be ready soon. So for skimming, what you want to do is after you boil the noodles, you want to wash and chill the noodles to remove the starch around the noodles and um, yeah, chill the noodles. Okay. Okay, the noodles ready. So let's put the noodle into that strainer and I'm going to wash the noodles. I'm going to do this twice. First time is to remove the starch. Second time is fully cool the noodle. Okay, throw away the water. And one more time. And this time is to chill the noodles. For the nice texture. Okay, 
Now I want to pick up the noodles. And want to use the other hand to kind of like comb the noodle to line it up nicely. Over time, just comb the noodles so that it's nicely lined up. And once the noodles are nicely lined up, what you want to do is just want to fold it up to nicely fit it onto the bowl. Okay, for the toppings, I'm going to put the mixed seaweed and the red snapper and have that sudachi in between. I'm just going to slide in the tomato as well and egg. And mema on the side. And I'm going to top it with thinly sliced leek and mitsuba leaf on top. And the dipping sauce should be ready too. So I'm going to pour that dipping sauce into the bowl. And radish sprouts in the dipping sauce. So this is how to prepare your red snapper shield skimmin. Okay, so we made kamage udon, shio ramen, and shield skimmin with uh, red snapper sock. For the questions, we have, is it okay to freeze the dough? Okay, first of all, it's okay to freeze the dough. And also, the remaining of the question is, at what part of the process is best for freezing? Okay. First of all, for ramen, I recommend uh, freezing it after it becomes in that noodle form. So once you just complete the process in that noodle form, freeze the dough, uh, freeze the noodle. Okay. For udon, um, you can freeze the dough when it's at that block state, uh, right after the second aging. Uh, when you have that block of dough, you can freeze them and you can defrost it and thin it out to make it into noodle. Or you can also freeze it after becoming into noodle strands. Okay? So it's okay to freeze them. And the second question, what's the function of the vinegar? Okay, so for udon, we usually put in 1% vinegar against the flour. Uh, that's to prevent the, um, that's to control the aging. Uh, because without the vinegar, the aging uh, might go too fast and end up uh, spoiling the dough. So 
we put the vinegar in to bring down the, uh, just, just make it slightly acidic to make it um, control the aging process. Okay, so that's about it for the questions. And I'm going to pass it back to Akira. All right, thank you, Thomas. That was a great um, presentation. And uh, that was a class for uh, high hydration noodles. And high hydration noodles, you know, they are very good, high quality noodles. And, um, you know, of course, like just not only like um, udon noodles, like not just uh, Japanese noodles, but like, you know, there are uh, high hydration noodles that are like applied to uh, pasta, like different types of Chinese noodles. And they are very, very good uh, in terms of like noodle texture. So, uh, you know, like you can try um, different types of like high hydration noodles in your home and in your uh, restaurants. And then just, uh, you know, let us know, like, if you have any questions or like, you know, kind of give us some feedback on like what kind of hydration noodle you made and, uh, you know, what kind of challenges you had. So thank you so much. All right.